Hi, this is Dave Johnson with another edition of Math Off Topics. Today I'm going to do the uh, Riemann sum or the exponential e to the x. In previous videos, I've done uh, the Riemann sum for cosine x, and I did one for uh, Riemann sum for sine x. And I'm kind of like rounding out the basic functions. I haven't done polynomials yet. I, I'd like to do logarithm. Uh, but let's do exponential. It's going to turn out it's not that bad. Also, I want to mention students sometimes think Riemann sums are difficult. Really, they just boil down to two basic sub problems. So let me let's get into it and talk about it some more. So I've written down uh, the Riemann sum for the integral e to the x dx, and you can see the integral, and I'm taking, I'm using uh, a, the lower limit to be zero, uh, because that makes it easier, and it turns out it's very simple to generalize this to any a. And of course, the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation as k goes from 1 to n of e to the x sub k times your delta x, where delta x is b minus a divided by n, and x sub k is equal to a plus k times delta x. And let's go ahead and um, fill this in. So if a is 0, then you get b divided by n. And, and also, if, if delta x is b over n and a is 0, then you get k uh, b divided by n. <clears throat> now, what were those two subproblems I was talking about? Well, one is to be able to somehow compress down this summation into a closed form expression. And we saw in the other videos how to do that for sine and cosine. <clears throat> We're going to do the same thing for the exponential today. And the other thing is to be able to take the limit of that closed form expression as n goes to infinity. So it's basically a limit problem. So Riemann sums are not that hard. Uh, although they are certainly more difficult than just applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. But that's what makes it fun, doing something a little more challenging. So I like to have a handle for the integral, and which will also become the handle for this limit of the sum. And so let's go ahead and do our substitutions. So I equals limit as n goes to infinity of summation, k equals 1 to n. Um, and so the x sub k is k uh, times b over n. So e to the k b over n. And then the delta x is the b over n. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the b over n outside the summation. I can't bring it entirely outside the limit because the n depends on uh, the limit is on, you know on n. So let me write this as limit as n goes to infinity b over n summation k goes from 1 to n e to the k b over n. <clears throat> now, this is where we have to start to think about, okay, what, how do we rewrite this? And some of you may recognize that this is just um, a geometric series, and I've already taken the liberty of writing that out. Let me pull that up here. So first, let's recognize that this is a geometric series uh, where the common ratio is uh, e to the x. And notice we have our index k here. So if you're summing from 1 to n, and there's various ways to write the uh, sum of a finite geometric series, but if you're going from k equal 1 to n, then you're going to have this uh, 
the common ratio here times one minus e to the common ratio, in this case, e to the x raised to the nth power. So you get e to the nx, and then divide by one minus the common ratio e to the x. Now, what is the uh, x in this case? Well, if we let x equal e over n, then we get that the summation k equals 1 to n of e to the k b over n is equal to, it's still going to be uh, e to the x, but x is b over n, so it's e to the b over n times 1 minus e to the k n, uh, or sorry, n times b over n which is just b, divide by, and then the bottom, <clears throat> which is 1 minus uh, e to the b over n. Okay, so if we substitute that in for this, then what we get is i is equal to limit as n goes to infinity b over n times, now the summation becomes e to the b over n times 1 minus e to the b, divide by 1 minus e to the b over n. And this is where we need to think about how to do the limit. Okay. Now let's just we always need to step back from these problems, just take a, a bird's eye view and see what's going on. Well, as n goes to infinity, b over n is going to go to 0. And this is going to be uh, e to the 0, which is 1, times 1 minus e to the b. <clears throat> uh, and then downstairs, e to the 0 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So we get 0 divided by 0. Now, we could just go ahead and do L'Hopital on this, but uh, I think it's going to be easier if we do a little change of variables to make it look nicer. So if we say, let's let y equal b over n, and then rewrite this as the limit. So if n goes to infinity, y goes to 0. So say y goes to 0 of y times e to the y times 1 minus e to the b, because that doesn't change, divide by 1 minus e to the y. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is move this into the denominator here. Um, and that's just simple algebra. If we put that in the denominator down here, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so it would end up back up here. So we know that's correct. So let me rewrite this as limit as y goes to 0 of 1 minus e to the b, divide by 1 minus e to the y, divided by y e to the y. And we're taking, this is going to be the same as 1 minus e to the b, divide by the limit, move that downstairs, 1 minus e to the y, divided by y e to the y. We also have a limit upstairs, but that doesn't affect anything. This is just y goes to 0. Okay. So, Really, what we, want, what we want to do quickly is turn that off. What we want to do is just find the limit here. We can do that with uh, it's a zero divided by zero uh, indeterminate form. So we get one minus e to the b upstairs, and then the limit as y goes to zero. Of well, what is the derivative uh, of the upstairs 1 minus e to the y? We get 
negative e to the y. And then downstairs, it's a product rule situation. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And when we take the limit as y goes to zero, we get one minus e to the b divided by upstairs we get negative one divided by and then um, this term here goes to zero and we get e to the zero which is one so we get a negative one downstairs and so that gives us if we move the negative sign upstairs and distribute we get e to the b minus one which is the answer and again we can generalize that so that we get the integral from a to b of e to the x dx is going to equal well e to the b minus one minus e to the a minus one which is equal to e to the b minus e to the a which is exactly what we would expect using the fundamental theorem of calculus so i hope that's been helpful and if you agree then please like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video